In this presentation, we will create a bank account within our accounting system. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our job costing company dashboard. Now we're going to be adding a new account. Normally, when you add the new accounts, you'd be going to the chart of accounts. That's going to be in the accounting drop down. So if we go into the accounting drop down up top and move on down to the chart of accounts, we'll see the chart of accounts that has been provided to us through the zero system. And they have a nice system within zeros for sorting the chart of accounts. It's going to be sorted. They're going to give us basically account numbers over here and uh, it'll be sorted here. And it's typically going to be sorted by type. So if you're looking at all accounts, as we can see up in our tabs up top, we're looking at all of accounts. Then you usually see the chart of accounts in terms of assets, then liabilities, then equity, then income, then expenses, and then the assets further broken down into uh, types of assets, including current assets, uh, inventory, fixed assets. These are all asset type of accounts. And then, and then liabilities, current liabilities, and then other non-current liabilities, then all the equity type of accounts, then revenue and expenses. Now you can also see that if you if you scroll back up top, uh, they give you a nice little breakout of assets and then you can go over here and you see all the uh, asset accounts broken out into that subcategory. So that's one way that you could focus in on the accounts within the chart of accounts that you would like to focus in on. So you got the liabilities and so on and so forth. So that is a nice feature. If you go back to all accounts, also just note that they lock some of the accounts, such as the accounts receivable, and that means you can't do certain functions to it, uh, such as recording a journal entry, unless, because the problem is that you need to have an account, a, a customer for it, or else the reports get messed up. Uh, so meaning you don't, the sub ledgers won't be matching the general ledger, and therefore they, they have some kind of restrictions based on the type of account uh, that, that you have here. So the accounts receivable restricted, accounts payable has a similar issue, and so on. So what we want to do is add a bank account. Now you would think that you, you just add a, a, a normal account, you just add an account here, right here, and say call it a bank type of account. But because the bank accounts are a little bit special, they're kind of special here, because they could have bank feeds. You might be connecting the bank accounts to the bank, and therefore there's kind of a different strategy or different system to setting them up. And therefore, we're going to go to the second button over here, which is to add the bank accounts. We're going to go ahead and add the bank account. Remember that the bank accounts, you could have those bank feeds. We're not going to go through the bank feeds connecting to the bank at this point in time. We do have a course that goes into bank feeds you could, you could take a look at. But right now, uh, we're, we're focusing in on the job costing. But in order to set up the bank account, note, uh, you, you could set up the bank feeds and that's why it's going to be set up in this way. You can search and you can find uh, your bank account to set that up. If you don't want to set up to the bank, the bank feeds, you can, of course, still set up a checking account. But we may still need to pick the bank. We just won't connect to the bank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of the bank. I'm going to pick Capital One. I'm going to say we bank with Capital One. I'm just not going to set up the bank fee connection. Uh, with that bank, I just want to have the actual account in our chart of accounts. So then it says automatically import your Capital One transactions. That would be the connection to the bank so that we can get the bank feeds coming directly from the bank. I'm going to say no, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to skip this information. Next, I'm going to enter the account name. I'm just going to call it a generic name for our practice problem. That being the checking account. If it was an actual account, you might want to put the checking account and then maybe some kind of reference number like the last four digits of the account number or something like that or reference the bank account. If you have multiple checking accounts, that can help you out to kind of differentiate as you go back and forth from uh, entering data to the reports for them. Then I'm going to have the account code. The account code is basically kind of uh, the account numbers on there. And you can see the formatting of the account numbers that are in the chart of accounts. I'm going to try to pick account, an account code, then an account number that fits in within, within the coding. If I mess up, I'll go back in there and I'll, I'll adjust it. And then we have, we're going to choose, it's going to be the day to day. So I'm going to pick the day to day. I think they're going to require you to add some kind of account number. And this would be, they're, they're looking for the account number of the actual checking account. Now, again, you don't need to put the actual account number if you don't want to. I'm just going to put, you know, a four digit number here so that we can process the, the checking account, set up the checking account. We're not going to be adding the bank feeds to it at this point. We just want the checking account. So I'm going to say continue. And there we have it. So now we have our, our checking account. It's going to be obviously an important account for our practice problem. And you can kind of see the account numbers that they set up here as well. I'm holding down control and scrolling and scrolling in to zoom into the screen so you can see it a little bit better. 
and you've got the 110 the, this is going to be the asset accounts 120 is going to be the the receivable so the assets start with the 100 and then the liabilities start with the with the twos for the 200s and the 300s are the equity and so on and so forth so you want to be able to pick the numbers that are going to be in line with where the accounts should line up when you're thinking about them lining up by type in other words, assets, liabilities, equity, and then income and, and expenses, and more specifically, the subcategories within those categories, meaning current assets, long-term assets, more specifically or more detailed, checking accounts, you know, the liquid assets, more liquid assets versus less liquid type of assets. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the job costing, but again, our focus here is on the job costing process. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.